what I'm interested in very specifically is what do we do to replace petroleum? The best replacement that we can see in terms of uh, something that can fulfill the roles of petroleum are the woody parts of plants, the residues that we get from agriculture, if you like. And we know that those materials contain the same sorts of complex carbon chemistries as does petroleum. And so what we work on is developing technologies that then allows us to um, convert the materials we might find in cereal straws, for example, into products such as biofuels, um, such as uh, the building blocks for making plastics, which we currently depend on petroleum for. So we do a, an awful lot of what we call association genetics, where we grow large populations of diverse varieties of crops, in which we can compare the sequences of their genomes with the characteristic that we're interested in, such as digestibility. And out of looking at hundreds or thousands of different varieties in this way, we can identify the main genetic contributors to those traits. I dropped out of school when I was 17. I had no idea what it was I really wanted to do with my life, but it wasn't going to college and it wasn't studying. I knew that I wanted to travel. That was something that had sort of been a burning desire in, inside me since a young age, and I think probably because we moved around a lot when I was a child and it just seemed like the natural thing to do. So I worked with this friend on fishing boats for a couple of seasons. And then eventually I bought a fishing boat myself and ran my own fishing boat. So I was fishing out of the Isle of Wight, uh, and mostly making money out of oyster fishing. When you're fishing, particularly oyster fishing actually, you, it's a really destructive process and you're dragging stuff up from the bottom of the sea all the time. And just the diversity of stuff that I was seeing there and, um, yeah, it, 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 it fascinated me. And it, it was um, more and more wanting to try and get a better understanding of those living systems, particularly marine living systems for me at that time. They, that, that became very important to me. So I did that right up until I was 25, 26. I was 26 when I went to college in the end. What I decided to do was to see if I could study uh, marine biology. And so I, I wrote to Portsmouth Polytechnic as it was at the time. Mm -hmm. The first term was really, really awful. I hadn't studied biology since I was 13 and they had continuous assessments so there were exams at the end of the term and I came 119th out of 120 people and so I said well I'll work as hard as I possibly can through the Christmas holidays and then if I still do badly in the assessments after the holidays I'll just quit because it's obvious I'm not going to be able to pull myself through this. And when we had the exams at the beginning of the next term, I came first. I literally just never let myself slip back down again. The thing that really grabbed me was metabolic biochemistry. And I used to dream of the TCA cycle and the glycolytic pathway at night in a very abstract form. Yeah, I really, it really caught me so um, passionately as that. It was that process of, of, of doing um, you know, experimental based investigation and then also the realisation that I probably would get a good grade because by then you know, I was clearly on track to get a first class degree that I realised I would have the opportunity if I wanted to to look for a position as a PhD student. I began my PhD studies at Pennsylvania State University in the USA and I approached a professor there who worked on hormone metabolism. In parallel with that, if you like, um, I'd started doing a side project with another group at Penn State, but what they really didn't have was any know-how in biochemistry. And within, I think, two weeks, I'd got the system working, and there's a really um, important fundamental biological discovery that yeah, I just kind of fell into for my PhD. It allowed me to get, I think, five really good papers out of that PhD, which yeah, was just great and kind of set me up for the rest of my career in many ways, I think. I 
I, I realised I wanted to come back to the UK for a number of reasons once I'd finished my PhD. One of the places I came to was York, um, not because at that time they didn't do any cell wall research, but they had advertised some lectureship positions. At the end of the interview, they told me, well, you know, you're not experienced enough to be a lecturer. You know, you literally have just finished your PhD. But would you be interested in applying for a fellowship to come here? And so they gave me a lot of help and advice about how to write a fellowship application to the Royal Society. And I was quite amazed that um, I was successful, you know. And, and, and so then I, I had this fellowship to come back to the UK with. One of the people that had a really big influence on me here at York was Diana Bowles and she was a professor of plant sciences here and she set up a centre called the Centre for Novel Agricultural Products that was dedicated to doing excellent plant science that was aimed at producing new products for society. So when I finished my um, tenure as a Royal Society University Research Fellow, um, I applied to join the Centre for Novel Agricultural Products and was really fortunate because they gave me a five-year research professorship. The best thing about my job is the freedom it gives me to think, to explore and to tap into the creative side of my being. Um, that's the bit that really sees me through in the research, I think. What would the 56-year-old me now say to the 17-year-old me back when I was leaving school, I'd just say, just leave, you know, get on and do what it is that you feel like doing and find out what it is that you want to do and just go with that. Because we live in a world with a lot of freedom, um, which is incredibly fortunate. I often think to myself how fortunate we are to be born at this time and in this place because life is so good and, you know, you do have that freedom. And if you don't have to, you know, if, if, if you're not actually obliged to go and do something at this moment in time and you're not sure what it is that you want to do, just get on and do what you feel like doing until it does come to you what you want to do.